Hi, this is George Alger, and welcome to this segment of Our Ventura TV. Today's topic is citrus greening disease. And our guests today are educators on the subject, and I'm going to have them introduce themselves, starting with Joni Blackster. Hi, George. Good to see you again. As you know, I am a health coach, and so I study the effects of pesticides, agricultural chemicals, et cetera, on human health. I am also the Ventura chapter leader for a nutrition uh, educational organization called the Weston Price Foundation. And I'm here with my friend Patty Pagling from Transition to Organics, and I will let her introduce herself. Yes, um, well, I'm the executive director of Transition to Organics, and we work to educate people about uh, non-toxic alternatives to pest problems. Good. Ron. I'm Ron Whitehurst, uh, pest control advisor with Rincon Vitova Insectaries, one of the oldest commercial insectaries on the planet. We help farmers get off of uh, toxic pesticides by developing a program to control pests biologically. Cool. All right, well, let's start with the most fundamental question for the topic, and that is what is citrus greening disease? Mm -hmm. Who wants to define that? I'll give a stab at it. Um, citrus greening disease is a disease that is carried by a bacteria, and that bacteria is carried by a psyllid. And if an infected psyllid lands on a citrus tree and injects that bacteria into the citrus tree, um, the current thinking is that it is a death sentence for that tree. And uh, at this point, citrus greening disease can be found in various places around the world. It can be found in India, it can be found in Mexico, which is, of course, very concerning for those of us close by in California. And more to the point, it has destroyed anywhere from two-thirds to about 80 percent of the citrus crop in Florida. So Florida orange juice is looking almost to be a dinosaur. Wow. Now, before I go on, I just want to make sure I understand what a, a psyllid is. Is that what you said? Mm -hmm. Why don't we give that to Ron, because okay. that's his area of expertise. A small psyllid is a small sucking insect, very much like an aphid or white fly. And it um, has a feeding tube, and it sticks it into the plant and sucks the juice out of the plant and gets its energy from there. And in the process, it can infect the, the, uh, the tree with uh, a disease. Okay. But it has been around, I imagine, oh, for a long yeah, time. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And as um, working in biological control, it's really easy to control aphids, white flies, psyllids, and that sort of thing biologically and keep them to a low level. The, the challenge is, is that if one psyllid feeding on the tree can uh, give the tree the disease, then, then um, it's not just you know, keeping the psyllids to low levels. It's, it's uh, working on developing a system where you can bring the plants to a high level of health. Exactly. Good. The immune system of the plant is mm -hmm. critically important in how to support it. That is frequently overlooked. Okay. Now, for those who don't know, including myself, mm -hmm. can you observe this citrus greening disease mm -hmm. by just taking a glance at a tree? Is it something that you have to inspect closely? What, what are the identifying characteristics of this disease? Patty, you want to take that? Mm -hmm. Well, as I, as I understand it, looking at the photos, because I've never seen it, that there is no uh, citrus screening in California at this point, and they are treating um, to uh, eradicate the psyllid itself. And so we're lucky in that way that we don't have to deal with the citrus screening disease here directly now. But um, as I understand it, it has to do with um, the uh, discoloration of the leaves and eventually, um, well, the fruit get, becomes distorted and off off-balanced and it becomes bitter, I believe, yeah. and then also the, the, the tree eventually dies because it, the, um, the flow of the phlegm mm -hmm. inside, oh. phlegm, inside the, the tree um, isn't able to flow anymore. So that carries the nutrients. So basically the tree starves. Yeah, and then it's citrus greening because the, the citrus fruit doesn't uh, color up, it doesn't become orange, it stays green, and it's mm -hmm. kind of bitter. And um, it's kind of interesting that the association of the disease is uh, uh, with pesticide use that, that it started showing up in, in Florida when they um, went from overhead sprinkling to drip irrigation to save water, which is a nice thing, but then they started using herbicide. And a couple of years later, the greening disease showed up. And so uh, there's um, this association of um, the greening disease with uh, pesticide use, especially herbicide use, like uh, Roundup, and then um, the uh, symptoms look a lot like uh, poisoning from Roundup. And then 
so now we hear that they want to use more chemicals, you know, mm. to control this disease, and so it seems like like a, a drunk trying to drink himself to sobriety. Oh. So part of the way that we all came together was we all attended a seminar on soil biology. And I went to that as a health educator because I know that human health is intimately related to the health of the animals that eat the plants that grow on the soil. So soil is everything about human health. And what we, we all learned at that seminar is that the critical piece that is largely being overlooked by the uh, approach that's currently being utilized by the state is that the microbiology, or that is to say the uh, community of microorganisms that live in the soil is really what determines the fertility of soil. You know, there are minerals and you can, you know, do amendments and things like that, but those uh, nutrients are not available to the plants unless you have a robust, thriving microbiological community in the soil. So when we heard that the state was starting this pesticide program where we were going to, everyone was going to be exposed to levels of these toxic chemicals, we came together to say, we know there's another way to do this, what can we do? And Ron at that point did some great research for us and followed up and found uh, people in the field some in Florida, another one who is doing a lot of work out of India where there's also a lot of citrus greening disease. But we came up with at least three candidates who claim to be actually reversing citrus greening in the field using their microbiological approaches. And this is revolutionary. This is not talked about. Okay, so now that I've garnered a little bit of info here, would it be safe to say that a critical point of this discussion is that there, there's a disease that's already in the United States, conceivably will be coming to California exactly. at some point. The state is trying to preempt that possibility through chemistry, mm -hmm. and yet you're advocating that there's actually much better ways to do that, mm -hmm. better for the environment, better for people, better for animals. Do I have this correct? Right. Mm -hmm. right. Okay, good. Right. So let's, can we speak a little bit about some of these other solutions then? Mm -hmm. How do you want to take that? Well, I think what Joni and, and also Ron were, were talking about, it's the soil health and also the eco, ecosystem has to be healthy with all the, the beneficial insects. And so um, the different people that are doing this research in the field are using um, the kinds of microbial uh, products and um, uh, different kinds of nutrients that are helping the plants become healthy again and able to uptake the, 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 all the nutrients that are in the soil so that they can withstand the citrus screening disease. And so we're advocating for this information just to get out there and to be known by the, the growers and the state to uh, actually acknowledge information that they already have. It's, it takes a while for, I think, organizations and, and governmental um, groups to kind of catch up with new research. Mm -hmm. And one of the things that has come out lately is with the, uh, the California Department of Food and Agriculture, they are saying that soil takes the main stage, which is really important and kind of a new thing for them to talk about. But, uh, and also, um, this year, 2015, is considered the year of soil. You know, the importance of soil, according to Vandana Shiva, who's a, a, an amazing um, woman in India who's doing work to, um, to help, you know, support plant health and, and to save seeds. Um, she's, uh, you know, she's saying that we have to start looking at the soil, so. Okay, good. So, are there some practical applications that people have citrus trees in their uh, property can take advantage of? So, the, the greening disease is not a death sentence, but to address it, it's not any one thing. It's a system. It's the whole ecology that you need to look at. So you need to bring life to the soil. So use compost for uh, your, uh, to bring fertility to the soil. Use mulch to cover the soil surface to uh, help to um, uh, prevent the sun from burning up the microbes in the soil. Use some cover crops like some clovers and that sort of thing to uh, help to increase the life in the soil. And then uh, 
have some blooming plants in the area so that you'll attract the beneficial insects, the lacewing ladybugs and surfeit flies that help to control the pest. And certainly don't use herbicide because the herbicide kills the beneficial microbes, it kills the beneficial insects on the soil surface. And so it's, it's you know, antithetical to growing healthy citrus. I imagine it also has an impact on wildlife. Oh, yes, yeah, huge. yeah. Salamanders, bees, bugs, birds, mm -hmm. and domestic pets, you know, particularly cats because they have smaller bodies, but also what the state is applying, you know, for dogs, humans, babies. As a health educator, I'm very concerned about uh, children that get exposed to this um, because there's pesticide drift, of course, for those people who live next to groves. It's very concerning to me. Yes, and, and also in the backyard, um, citrus um, in, in people's backyards, the CDFA is going in and, and spraying. What's the CDFA? California Department of Food and Agriculture. Okay. They have a program where they're going into people's backyards and spraying the citrus trees. And what we in, also in areas want, where the in, are, in areas yeah. where the psyllid has, is, has yes. Mm -hmm. and as a preventive. As a preventive, measure. because there is no disease here yet right. that is known. Um, so we also want people to know that they can opt out. That is an option to call a number that we can give um, and tell the, C the CDFA that they will opt out of the program. Okay, good. Yeah. Well, and, um, there's, a, there's a problem as far as the pesticide regulation that they're spraying a pesticide to cure a disease and it's not on the label. And then that uh, they're spraying these pesticides around when these, these organic advisors have shown that you can grow healthy citrus in the presence of the pest and the disease. So the rationale of, of doing this, this wide, area-wide spraying with the pesticides kind of loses its momentum. So we did come together as a threesome and others as well um, to create a group called Soil Solutions Network because we are wanting to provide information for people and uh, anyone interested in learning more about this, Patty has many, many resources. Uh, it's Soil Solutions Network at Gmail. We also have regular meetings every other week. Uh, what else do we want to tell people? Mm -hmm. Let's give well, them the opt-out number. Workshop, yeah. yeah, well, the opt-out number is 800-491-1899. And usually when people get the, the um, tag on their door, they have 40, 24 to 48 hours to respond. Mm -hmm. So a lot of people wouldn't even notice that. but. In so if you, you have questions, just go ahead and call that 800 number and ask if you're in an area that's being sprayed. And if you are, let them know you want to opt out. Okay. And then we'll be holding some uh, workshops for uh, homeowners and then for uh, commercial citrus growers and pest control advisors on how to manage citrus so you can bring them to a high level of wellness and a high level of health uh, biologically so that the plants will naturally and we, we are really disease. hoping to bring some experts here who are actually on the ground mm -hmm. doing this work, reversing, not just preventing, but reversing citrus greening so that growers can talk to growers. That's what we're hoping for. Right. And we do have information on transition-2-organics.org, and you can click on Soil Solutions Network. Brilliant. All right. Well, we are just about out of time. And I take it the, um, the website will also note where these workshops are being held. Yes, when, when we get them organized, absolutely. Okay, good. So we have to end the show right now, but is there a um, summating message you'd like to convey to the viewers? Joni? Well, just that um, we are here to provide assistance and education around this topic. So uh, we really want all growers to understand that our perspective is, is that citrus screening disease is not a death sentence and you do have alternatives at your fingertips and feel free to get in touch with us if you would like to know what we are currently discovering. Thank you, Joni. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Patty. Thank you, Ron. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. This is George Alger signing off for this segment of Our Ventura TV. Until we see you again.